Hi there, I'm Darren McDermott and you have just tuned in to Ducoscopy TV. Today we're going to have a look at the Swiss franc and its relationship with Swiss real estate. Now the UBS Swiss real estate bubble index increased 1.17 points in the very first quarter. Now a reading above 2 would actually suggest a housing bubble. However, my guest today, Michel Giordon, believes Switzerland is already in a housing bubble. Michel, it's a pleasure to have you back. Hi, Dorian. So, you know, why do you think this? And of course, what are the implications it involves and what type of risks are we facing? Okay, um, yes, the UBS index, as you, as you pointed out, uh, is not yet in bubble territory. But if you look at the evolution of prices, and I think we have a chart uh, relating to this, uh, you can see here, uh, apartments, owner-occupied apartments went up by almost 60% over the last 12 years, and uh, houses followed the, sa the same trend. So that's uh, clearly a worry. Now it's hard to define a bubble. Uh, UBS has developed an, in an index for that, but many people, uh, there's a famous saying by former chairman of the Fed, Alan Greenspan, who says, it's hard to define a bubble. You only know there's a bubble when it bursts. And other people like Warren Buffett says, uh, it's, I don't know how to define a bubble, just looking at the price evolution of prices, such as this chart here, basically it's when you feel like you want to laugh, you know, at some point you just look at the price of the square meter in Geneva or in Zurich and you say, that's just ridiculous, I won't buy. So that's a kind of subjective definition of a bubble. But what matters is what the central bank thinks. And for the central bank, the Swiss National Bank, the, the answer is clearly yes. And we can see from the next chart, what is worrying the Swiss National Bank is the evolution of total credit in relation to Swiss GDP. So we see here it's been uh, evolving flatly around 150%. And as of uh, 2007, when interest rates were brought to, to the floor, uh, it shooted up to nearly 170%. And this is clearly too much for the Swiss National Bank, it's worrying. And that's what matters, it's the worry that the Swiss National Bank, because it thinks that there's a bubble. And why does it think so? We have another chart showing that basically its argument is simple. It says, look at Switzerland, that's the red line here, 170% total credit over GDP. And most of that total credit goes into real estate. Uh, you look at the countries which have been above and you find Ireland, you find UK, you find Spain, you find the United States. These are all countries uh, which have had at some point trouble with their real estate uh, sector. So that's what matters. Uh, if the central bank believes that we are in trouble, then we should listen to the central bank. And in terms of listening to the central bank, now the SMB is aiming to take pressure off the Swiss franc. Now what exactly type of impact will this have on Swiss real estate? Mm -hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, they have to choose, they had to choose between two conflicting goals. One is to remove pressure from, uh, from the Swiss franc, which has been appreciating because of all the problems in the Eurozone. Uh, and therefore they brought the interest rate to, to zero. And, and that's what fueled the bubble in the real estate. And now they have their hands tied because if they were to increase rates to deflate this bubble in the real estate, then it would put upward pressure on the Swiss franc and thus endanger this, this ceiling of 120 it has. So for the Swiss National Bank, when they look at this chart, the comment from uh, one of the, the number two of the Swiss National Bank, he says, Jean-Pierre Dantin, uh, whom I met recently, said, interest rates in Switzerland have been too low for too long. You know, it's been fueling this, uh, this bubble and that's, and that's the, the trouble. And so people now have been piling up into buying real estate because they say interest rates are at, at the floor. Mm -hmm. They will not rise because there's no inflation out there and there's the fact that we need to, to cap the Swiss franc strength. So the Swiss National Bank will keep interest rates as it is. And this explains why real estates have been going through the roof. But what they have introduced now together with the FINMA with the supervisory authority in Switzerland, they introduce a counter-cyclical capital buffer, CCB, which basically uh, means that banks who are active in uh, providing credit to uh, uh, domestic uh, investors uh, have to put more equity. They will have to increase their equity 
to cover this activity uh, and they will have it will kick in in September so the measure is is to cool down uh, this overheated uh, real estate market so that's one since they cannot raise interest rates they have to go in another way and the other route is to try to to bring the credit uh, supply mm -hmm. by the bank down by asking them to increase their equity. And finally, Michelle, now the Japanese yen is, as we've been seeing, is weakening because the Bank of Japan has been kind of tackling that problem they have been going having for a long time. Um, and they've been doing quite, been very successful in that. But what type of impact would this actually have on Swiss franc and on Swiss real estate and everything right. going on here in Switzerland? Indeed, indeed. Yeah, we can show a chart here which puts it that uh, this funny conclusion where people will say what the, how the weaker yen could be the needle in the bubble i.e. could be the what we would burst this uh, bubble in the real estate market in switzerland what's the link there what's the causality well the story is simple uh, as you say the bank of japan is printing money and f uh, financing the uh, trying to get the country out of deflation by printing more money uh, this has an impact of weakening the yen against both the dollar and the euro. So the euro is strengthening against the yen and in the process is also uh, uh, strengthening vis-a-vis -vis the Swiss franc. And we can see the relations here with the chart, which see in orange, we see the dollar yen uh, rising above 100, and that's on the left scale. And on the, on white, in white, you have the euro Swissy, and it's now today 125 uh, this morning. Um, so, and we see that uh, the, the Swiss franc has been weakening uh, against, uh, against the euro, so they are departing from that ceiling of 120 uh, in the back of this uh, easing yen uh, process. So, my point is, if the yen were to weaken further, okay, it's, uh, it has weakened already quite a bit, but the Central Bank of Japan is just expansive, expanding its balance sheet massively. Um, so, probably some more weakening is in the pipe. And so if we were to near, say, 128, 130 uh, Swiss franc, we cannot exclude the fact that this would give sufficient leeway to the Swiss National Bank to say, okay, now we don't have the constraints, we, have, we no longer have our hands tied by the, by the strong Swiss franc, so we can raise interest rates, and that would certainly cool, uh, deflate, possibly even prick the, the bubble of, uh, in the real estate in Switzerland. Well, it's something uh, very interesting, and let's see what happens. Thank you very much, Michelle. My pleasure, Dorian. And thank you for watching Duke Scopy TV today. Now, tomorrow, we'll be bringing an economist from UNCTA to have a very special look at the Palestinian economy. But for now, have a great day.